So this is then Orgasmatron. This was the album that was going to put Motive back on top to capture the glory of the uh, the classic lineup years with the two new guitarists. They'd had a uh, they'd had four songs featured on No Remorse, the the anthology collection, which Lemmy said was released. I think in eighty four. He said it it sounded like a death knell when that was released, like the best of Motorhead, and he insisted that um, the four songs were Killed by Death, Snaggletooth. Locomotive and Steal Your Face. I think I think it was a double album, so that they're end of each side of the album, uh, a new song from the new lineup. Uh, and then they left Bonds on Bonds record label very acrimoniously, and they couldn't they couldn't they were passed by a load of other labels. They were viewed as already sort of being finished, um, and eventually they formed their own uh, record label, GWR, Great Western Road, based on that. And Orgasmatron, this was, yeah, so this was going to be the storming one that put him back on top. Recorded in 11 days, so a very tight schedule. Um, so what of it then? Uh, well, Lemmy's always said that they had a mix and it was really good, and then it was taken to New York to be mastered. And when it came back, it was crap. Apparently they had this sort of grand unveiling and they bought in this case of champagne and stuff. And they started playing it and... um the publicist was pushing the champagne <laughs> under a table because even they could hear that it was, it was no good. Uh, I mean, it is a, it's a heavy album and the drums are really heavy in the mix. And, uh, it's, it's like, I learned as, I don't know, it's one of the things getting older, but it's like very like rock and roll for me, which I love. Once I've listened, once I've learned to listen past the, the crap mixing, um, I've grown to really like it. I really love the album. And some say it's like one of their classic albums, like Ace of Spades in 1916 now. And about the time, it, it really didn't do them any good at all. I don't, it didn't sell very well. And it just continued their downward spiral, which had started since another perfect day with Robbo. Uh, let's have a quick look at the tracks. Death Forever, really like that track. And the live versions of that, when Wurzel was in the band, you hear... I well, I think what a great vocalist Wurzel was as well. Death forever till the battle's done. He's doing these harmonies with Lemmy, and they kind of they split the vocal. I don't know how to describe it. But they're doing two different sort of well, harmonies, and yeah, really good. A great live track. Um, nothing up my sleeve. I really like that one. In fact, I don't think there's there's not an out there's not a track on this album that I don't like. Basically, ain't my crime clever little thing. You know, nothing up my sleeve, babe. The uh, track number two has got the great reference to the late great Tommy Cooper. You know, just like that, she used to say to Magic Trick. If Tommy Cooper, if you don't know who he is, and he was a he's a comedian magician. He used to he was a great magician. He used to pretend to muck up a magic trick, and he'd just stare blankly at the audience, and his face everyone just laughed at it. But he was a really good magician. He'd always pull something out at the end, which made everyone go, oh, and he goes just like that. Um, the claw. It's just probably my least favourite track, but I don't dislike it. That's how much I like the album. Me Machine, fantastic track. And they did it at the birthday party. They did it live. And they finished playing it. And Lemmy says, we may not be the best band in the world, but we're definitely the fastest. And anyone who, any musician who, who, who slags off Lemmy's bass playing, oh, he played one note, <laughs> which was a lie anyway. But anyway, for one note thing, I said, all right, then. Please play me the bass line to Mean Machine. It is hard. You have to play. It's like a machine gun. You have to play so fast. Um, anyway, moving what back in the day would have been side two if you got it on record. Built for Speed, great track. And they um, that was the one they used to play, you know, built, um, Bite the Bullet and Chase is Better Than the Catch together, those two tracks. And then later on, they very much did um, Bite the Bullet and then going into Built for Speed. You know, we know we're born for, we're built for speed. And in really good. Riding with the driver, yeah, that's that's what the album was originally be called. That was its working title. Um, and let me said the yeah, the track didn't turn out as good as we thought it would, which was pretty much representative of the entire album. So anyway, that got shelved. Doctor Rock opened the live set, you know, a lot ever after. I mean, they just right up to the end. I think even when Lemmy was really sick and there was a lot of tracks he just couldn't, you know, handle. I think Killed by Death. 
Iron Fist and like, he still did Dr. Rock. A really good opening track. You know, we are mode head. We play rock and roll. All oh, right. You know, and the cigarette would be spat out just before we went into it and all that. And the, the lights would go on and yeah, but yeah, really good opening track. And then the classic Orgasmatron, which, you know, some say invented thrash metal or whatever. I don't know. I'm not too clued up on the really heavy stuff, but I know Sepultura, Sepultura, Sepultura covered it. I've heard it. I don't like it, <laughs> but whatever. But yeah, Orgasmatron, really good storming. Someone described it as sort of robots lumbering over hills with laser eyes, which was kind of a funny description of it, but actually it works when you listen to the track. But let me say, however, it was mud. Orgasmatron was mud. He, you know, what has become definitely one of Moto's classic tracks, the original recording of it, he did not like at all. I think going back to number three, Ain't My Crime, so it was it Bill Laswell who engineered it? I think he took it to New York. And originally, like, um, for example, Ain't My Crime, how they mucked up the mix. Ain't My Crime had, I've had enough stepping out of line. The, the chorus had four different vocal lines on it. So it's four harmonies, which, fun enough, when I heard that track, I kind of heard them. I know it sounds like yeah, bull, but I really did. I heard the possibility, and I can imagine Lemmy doing it, which he did much later on Hammered, you know, um, Walk of Crooked Marley did all those harmonies in the chorus, which for me really worked. And I can imagine doing the same with Ain't My Crime. But Bill Laswell, I think he just thought it was too, you know, motored, but I don't know. Maybe they were getting too grandiose or some crap. You know, he wanted to keep it simple, what he viewed motored as being. So he removed them all. He just left one one line, um, which is a real shame. And yeah, so another... I don't think the mixing, for me... The mixing, when I listen to it, it's not as obviously bad as, say, Iron Fist or, or Rock and Roll. And I've gone about a lot, but two albums for me, which had good songs, but were re really, really, really affected by crap mixing. For, for me, this one doesn't. I, I don't hear, I, I didn't hear the original, obviously. And like Orgasmatron, I don't, I don't think it's mud, you know. But stuff like uh, Ain't My Crime and stuff, I could, I could hear those vocal takes. Anyway, it. It didn't, it commercially, it did not do well. Uh, and Motorhead's record sales continued to slip down. And they were going to that really bleak time of the late 80s before 1916 kind of got them up a bit or for a little while. Um, but yeah, they'd just be having to be on the road all the time. And I think Phil Campbell at this point, or Phil Campbell. Phil Campbell actually went for a really rough time. I think he was drinking two bottles of vodka a day. I mean, Ozzy Osbourne said he was a lunatic and like nearly died a bunch of times. And if Ozzy Osbourne says that about someone, then you can guess it's pretty much, you know, true. It actually happened. I think he was always threatening to leave the band until Lemmy one day said to him, you know, you're going to have to stop leaving the band or I'm going to let you. And then that shocked Phil Campbell. It's like, well, I could actually, you know, if I can't be a, a prima donna or acting like a prima donna, I could actually be chucked out. Um... But I mean, any, I, 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 God, I can't imagine anything worse than being on the road all the time in a in a band that you're struggling to stay afloat, and you're not getting the success that you know motor they they really deserved. But anyway, so yeah, they did not arrest their slide down, which had happened since um, the the album with Robbo and Have a Perfect Day, and it's a shame because I'll say all the tracks on there, bar one, which is just a bit mediocre for me, I really like. Um, but them's the breaks. Yes, that's uh, Orgasmatron, nineteen eighty six. Orgasmatron, a great cover by Joe Pitag Pitagno. Anyway, as usual, great cover. Every time he did the cover, really good. <laughs> 